Welcome. In the last video, I showed how to make these bends. This is a cherry lamination. It's a six piece ply lamination. Six pieces, one eighth of an inch thick, which makes three quarter of an inch thick bend. Uh, this video, I am going to show how, we're, how I'm going to interlock these pieces. This is for a writing desk, and this is actually part of the bottom part of the leg. So we're gonna have one piece going this way, and then we're going to have the other piece going this way, and so we're gonna get this kind of effect uh, on the bottom, interlocking. Now, one of the first things that I did with this bend is that I had to figure out about what size this would fit in if it were a square, and that's gonna help me to mark out the regions that I need to make in order to mark out how these are gonna interlock. So I figured out that dimension, which is approximately 24 by 24, which is a board that I cut out here. And by the time this desk is made, it's gonna be 30 and one half inches high. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay this piece down on here, and I'm gonna start marking out the area around the arch. First, I'm gonna mark the inside of the arch. I'm gonna make sure that this is held down a little bit so that it's not gonna move on me. Just gonna draw a line all the way around the inside. I especially wanna make sure that I'm marking well right in this area because this is where they're gonna intersect. Then we'll go ahead and we'll just mark the outside. Again, I'm just gonna do a second mark to make sure that that outside portion where they intersect is clearly defined. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and mark the other piece. Same procedure every time. Consistency is success. Same thing again on the inside. I set up this board. This is the one that I just marked those bends out on. And I'm hoping on the video you can see the lines that I marked with the pencil. You can see where they intersect, one point, two point. And this is more or less what it's gonna look like when it's on the desk. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have to lay down the bends on here again, and we're gonna mark out the points on both sides where they intersect on the bends. And then that's gonna show us where our cut lines have to be. Okay, so here we are looking on the inside, and we see right about here is our first cut line end right about there. I'm gonna mark out the outside portion. Now I have all of the marks made on the outside and the insides. And what I'm gonna do now is just line up the outside mark and the inside mark. And that's gonna show me the angle that I have to cut. Okay, now you can see how I marked this out. And this is what it's gonna look like when I cut that out. As you can see, it's got an angle and then it goes down. And that's how that's gonna to have to be cut out in order for it to intersect together. Now I have my lovely pieces here all marked out and all ready to cut out. And this is when we run into the dilemma. The dilemma of method. And how are we gonna do this? Well, there's several ways you could do this. You could do it on a bandsaw. Not a problem with doing that if uh, you don't mind risking the chance of the blade catching and your piece flipping and you cutting your fingers off. A much, much safer way is to use a Japanese handsaw. These are excellent cutters. They cut very fast, very efficient, but there's a problem. You don't have the depth, really. You would have to cut down on the tip end and make very, very small cuts to get that done. Now, I have to do a whole bunch of these, so I don't want to sit here forever and ever messing around with this. I mean, I use it all the time, but for this particular project, it's just not worth it for the time. A third method may be to take some chisels and slowly chisel your way down it. I, I don't know why you would do that, but you could. You could make some sort of a sled on the table saw and cut it on the table saw. Nothing wrong with doing that. As long as it's perfectly straight and you have it fastened down, you could do that. Of course, you'd have to make a big fancy jig or you'd have to have a jig available to do that. So again, it runs into a time constraint. Is it worth taking the time to make the jig? 
Here's an idea. You could use an air cutting tool like this. That would certainly do the job. You put a wood blade in there, hook it up to the air compressor, and in a few seconds you got the cut. But you may not be able to cut very straight with this. So yes, you could use it, but why? Well, here's what I decided for this project. I'm going to use my chop saw or sliding saw. And one of the primary reasons why? Lasers. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty much all saws nowadays that you can buy have some type of a laser on them. If they don't, it's well worth getting it because it helps you to just get up and generally line up your piece really quick. Also, this has a nice flat surface on it. And that's what I need to make this cut. So I can set that on there, line up the laser, and I'm going to have a nice cut every time. And it's going to be perfectly straight up and down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get within the vicinity of where I need to be and then later on I'm going to come in with some hand tools, some chisels, some files and I'm going to work myself up to where these pieces will finally fit together perfect. So then I won't have to come back later and fill this in with glue or epoxy or something like that. I want to have two pieces that fit seamlessly together and I believe that using this method I'll be able to accomplish that. Okay, we are going to get in here with the handsaw just a little bit and because obviously the blade is round and so it doesn't make a perfectly flat cut. This is going to let me get just all the way to the bottom of the cut and make it nice and flat. Now I have to knock this section out and again there's a lot of ways you could do that. I, again I could go to the bandsaw and make cuts in and out, try to weave in and out and cut it out. Um, I could have continued making cut after cut after cut on the chop saw, but this is probably the fastest method right here, the good old chisel and hammer. I use a rubber mallet for my chiseling, I don't have a big fancy mallet, probably need to turn one on the lathe someday. But I just put this on here and I'm going to get it close to the line. And as with any uh, chiseling operation, quick and swift is the best way to do it. There you go, got the piece out right there. Now we're onto the tricky part. If the other stuff hasn't seemed tricky yet, this is the part that separates wh whether or not your work is gonna look really professional or if it's gonna look like not. I don't know any other way to put that in a nice way. This is the refining moment. Every cut that we've made on all these slots has been done to allow us a little bit of tolerance one way or the other so that we can finally fit this in and make this this joint really nice and tight. Now just on my rough cuts the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these parts and see if they fit together at all. And I can see, I'm just testing everyone, see that one's close, uh, but I'm going to have to do some refining to fit it in. And these other ones are all small which is just fine. So I want to be able to start to take this now and start to fit these pieces together. And in no time at all, with just a little bit of filing and chiseling, we're going to make this work. I realize at this time I should probably show some of the tools that I use, and these are some of my favorite tools. Some wisdom from my father when I was young, he always said get the best tools that you can afford. Now he wasn't a woodworker, <laughs> so I'm not sure he understood at that time exactly how much it would end up costing me. This is just a set of DeWalt chisels that I got at Home Depot. Now believe it or not, for a relatively moderately priced set of chisels, I find these to be very good chisels. They hold their edge very well. So there's a mini endorsement there. I have a Dragon Rasp that I bought from Stuart McDonald. These are very fine finish, almost no sanding required with this rasp. And it's tapered, so you can get into really small places down here. You could do more serious filing down at that end down there. I just have a basic flat file that I'm gonna use uh, maybe to get in some of these areas and flatten them out. It's just the right width for what I need. I can get in there and make nice flat areas. And just with those basic tools, I should be able to get this job done. OK, 
Okay, so what you just experienced there was the power of video editing. That entire process you just saw was approximately 25 minutes long in order to get all of the parts fit together. And also, I went ahead and sa finished sanded these pieces. Uh, I went up to 150 grit, which is fine for a natural finish like I'm going to be doing on this. And so now it's a very nice and completed looking project here. Um, there are a couple things I'm going to do to finish this out. Uh, I'm going to have some boards that are wider than what this is. This is five and a half inches wide. And there's going to be one that's going to go on the top. And then, of course, one that's going to go on the bottom. And that's going to give this project a completed look for the bottom of the writing desk. I'm going to show you a picture here that you can see the joinery. And just see how that's fitting together. Now there are a couple more things that I have yet to do on this writing desk project to finish it up. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing in an upcoming video is doing the inlays on the top of the writing desk. We're going to have a monogram initials, uh, this particular person that this desk is for, and we're also going to be doing uh, an inlay around the border of the writing desk. And all that's going to be done uh, in curly maple and perhaps a mix of other woods. I think it's going to look really nice. If you like what you see, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a few more videos coming forward as I come to the completion of this project. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks. Have a good day.